For the first 20 years, the BMW M5 recipe was a simple one. Front naturally aspirated engine, rear wheel drive, and a manual gearbox. Then the next 20 turned everything on its head. The E60 went automatic, the F10 turbo, the F90 all wheel drive, and now this, the G90, is a plug-in hybrid. Meet the 535 kilowatt, 1000 newton meter, seventh generation BMW M5. Yes, the new M5 is electrified, and that's resulted in lots of big numbers, like its power and weight, and lots of small numbers, like its performance, and crucially, its emissions figures. Today, I'm gonna to give you the full tour, not only inside and out, but also underneath, as BMW has granted us access to its workshop, so we're gonna have a look at some of the new hardware. Before we get into it, like the video, subscribe to the Car Sales channel, give us your thoughts on the new M5 in the comments below. Before we head back to the workshop, a quick word on the new car's dimensions. Like the regular 5 Series on which it's based, the new M5 has gotten bigger. Around 110mm longer, 70mm wider and 40mm taller than its predecessor. The wheelbase has stretched by 25mm, but the tracks have increased significantly. 58mm at the front, 66mm at the rear. Combine this with an extra 10mm of rubber at each corner, and the new M5's footprint has increased massively. Unfortunately, that's not the only thing that's increased massively as that plug-in hybrid system means the new car weighs around 600 kilograms more than the F90. Put another way, that's 1,000 kilos more than the original E28 M5. Now let's go look underneath. Let's start with the engine. And essentially, it's the same S63 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 that first appeared in the F10 M5 in 2011, though it's now called the S68 as it's been through a few revisions since then. Power has actually gone down slightly compared to its predecessor. This makes 430 kilowatts, whereas the F90 made 441 in standard guise, or 460 as a competition. It's not quite the whole story though, as peak power is now made across a wider band, and compression ratio has increased from 10 to 10.5 to one. Less power and more compression usually means less boost and better response. Wheel sizes have increased from 19s all round to 20s at the front and 21s at the rear. If I just lift this off, you get to see the brakes, which are gonna work very hard, stopping two and a half tons. Standard steel rotors are 410 millimeters with six piston calipers, but the optional carbon ceramics you see here are even bigger. 420 millimeter discs, and they're around 10% thicker too. You can tell a BMW with carbon ceramics by the gold calipers, if you look closely, you can see the cracking, but don't worry, they're not about to fall apart. It's just a characteristic of the construction. Three mode adaptive dampers are still standard and the steering is now solidly mounted to the subframe to eliminate flex. What's truly incredible is the amount of bracing underneath this car. It's like it's got its own external roll cage trying to keep the body shell as stiff as possible. Under the engine, we've got this enormous shear panel that's as thick as my finger. It's like something you'd see on a rally car. The gearbox remains an eight-speed torque converter auto. A couple of the ratios have altered slightly and the final drive is a bit shorter. But the main change is the installation of a 145 kilowatt electric motor into the box, which has its own gearing to increase torque from 280 to 450 Newton meters. What does all this mean? Total outputs of 535 kilowatts and 1,000 Newton meters and zero to 100 in three and a half seconds. So I think that might be a bit conservative. On the other side, the ability to travel at up to 140 k's an hour on electric power alone. Down the centre of the car we have the active exhaust with its electronically controlled flaps and tucked in above that is the prop shaft, which is a good chance to mention that there are still the three drive modes, regular four-wheel drive, the more rear biased four-wheel drive sport and two-wheel drive, which obviously sends all the power to the rear. Either side of that we've got the battery packs, again protected by these massive thick panels. These total 18.6 kilowatts and give the M5 a claimed EV range of around 65 k's. The rear of a car isn't normally very exciting, but there's a bit more going on here than usual. We start with another massive brace that extends back from the batteries, linking to something that looks like it's from a world rally car or a trophy truck. It's absolutely massive. The other first for an M5 is what BMW calls integral active steering, or rear wheel steer in other words. We've got this little motor set up here that allows the rear wheels to turn up to 1.5 degrees in either direction. 
blow 60 k's an hour, it turns in the opposite direction to the fronts to increase agility, helpful with this massive wheelbase, or at higher speeds it turns in the same direction as the fronts to increase stability. Now let's hop back to the studio and have a look inside. Before we do that, it's worth covering off why the new M5 is a plug-in hybrid. Simple, regulations. Manufacturers now have very strict emissions targets they need to meet across their entire fleet. Now you might not think a 535 kilowatt twin turbo V8 is a very good way of doing that, but the official test procedure allows FEVs to start with a full battery. So the M5 can do the first 65 Ks or so using no fuel at all, and then just a little bit at the end. Hence the official claim fuel consumption figure of less than two liters per 100 K. Now that's not at all realistic and BMW will be the first to tell you that, but it's how cars like this can still contribute to manufacturers meeting those strict targets. Let's hop inside. Inside, as you'd probably expect, it's basically the new five series with some added M accoutrements. Heaps of kit are standard, quad zone climate control, the cool interactive light bar from the 7 series, which has kind of got a M theme happening at the moment, massive head up display, augmented reality navigation, dual wireless charging pads, 18 speaker, Bowers and Wilkins stereo. M5 specific stuff include the heated and ventilated sports seats, the steering wheel is from the i5 M60, but it's now got the little M1 and M2 toggles for your favorite combination of settings. The infotainment is iDrive 8.5, sorry, operating system 8.5, they call it now. Video streaming, gaming, wireless smartphone mirroring, a million other apps, personal assistant, heaps going on. But this being an M car, it also has a lap timer. They're not too sure many of these will be hitting the racetrack. Thanks to that wheelbase stretch, there's now more than three meters between the front and rear axles. So the result is almost limousine-like legroom. Of course, if you're spending this sort of money and want to be driven, just get an i7. But for scaring the kids or your friends, at least they'll be comfy. We've got quad zone climate control, as I said, heated seats on both sides, two USB-C ports in the middle, and another one in each seat back, and window shades as well. Cup holders in the center armrest. Very comfy rear seat. There is a lot to take in with the new BMW M5, but to be honest, we're still left with more questions than answers. Being a new M car, expectations are very, very high, and while it will undoubtedly be eye-wateringly fast, will it deliver a driving experience to make its forebears proud? It's certainly going to be a lot of fun finding out. Thanks for watching.